Hello. Here we are. Nice to see some people already chatting. Wonderful. Um, I'm so glad that you can join us today. So jump into the chat and um, tell us where you're, you are. Um, I'm, I'm Dylan in central Germany and happy to be here drawing with you all today. Um, we have a wonderful muse today. It's so nice to have um, Medusa's photo to work from and it's going to be a, yeah, a nice hour together. Um, so I see there are people here that are in the Ink Naturally course, which is great to see. Um, have a, a special poppy treat today. So um, we have amazing poppy flower fields here at the moment. So I've been collecting a lot of poppies to make ink with. Bev's here from Australia. Wow, that's um, I, I'm impressed that you're up so early. That's great. Um, so many names. Cindy, Stina, hi, wonderful. Great that you're here, Francesca, Clover. Um, yeah, it's so wonderful to be here and to be able to draw together <coughs> remotely from afar. And it's just such a, a nice way to be able to, to connect and create together. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Pam, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying my class. I'm enjoying it too. It's, it's amazing just seeing what, um, what everyone's doing, what everyone's creating and um, all the, the inky experiments that people are doing. There, there's so many people just experimenting and, and making ink that I have uh, not put you onto. You're just uh, trying it out yourselves, which is great. And a lot of people have been doing the beetroot and turmeric and blueberry ink. And it's just so wonderful to see. It's uh, so much fun. Um, Jude, hello. Yesid, Shirley, Julie. Um, so many names. I'm just glad that you're all here. Vijay from India, great to have you here. Um, it must be pretty late in India too, right? Um, cool, I have a, a nice little colour test that I want to do with you because we've been um, in, in the course we started playing with some modifiers with our ink. Um, so before I, I introduce our wonderful muse I'm just going to do a little colour test that I would like to show you. And as we're... Beata's reusing beetroot ink, excellent. Reusing is a great thing to do. Um, I'm just going to I'll bring up my desktop at the moment. So I have some, these are some of the poppies that have been growing here and I'm gonna do a nice little um, poppy painting as a color test. So I have my poppy, poppy flower, poppy petal ink here. And it has this really nice like red wine color. And it's just a joy to work with. Um, so Mickey just asked if today's ink will work with other flower petals. It will. Um, so feel free to ask questions. As here, hello. Um, ask questions um, in the chat as I'm talking and and working, and I'll, I'll try to address everybody's questions. So it will work with different petals, um, but you're going to have a different kind of saturation from different petals, and some flowers are really good for making ink with, and some. Not so much. So I'll just put some, a lot of ink down here. It's really nice to play with it like this. Just let it pool and just see this nice color that we have. And so there are different modifiers. We're, we're mostly using this easy, easy to get um, baking soda, bicarb soda and lemon juice. Um, Right, that, that'll suffice for this little color test. And this is a, a pretty magical thing, which I like to do. I'm just gonna drop some baking soda right into the ink and um, see how it just starts to darken. So you could do this with some like pre-prepared, uh, like a mixture of, of water and, and baking soda. So this will <clears throat> spread out that, that darkness and with some lemon juice over on the other side, Add a few drops, and it's kind of it's pushing, pushing the acidity and alkalinity. The the pH value is being pushed around, and it's interesting to see here that the the citric acid 
is bringing the color back towards the original color of the petals, which I think is super interesting. And here it's turning into this really nice dark, um, like super dark, almost black uh, red color, like this is nice dark gray. So we have three different colors here that we can work with, which is cool. Um, so it's, yeah, it's this, I, th I think it's the same as bicarb soda. Maybe someone in the chat uh, is able to, so just that question there, is it the same as bicarb soda? I think in, in German it's natron. Um, baking soda, I think is bicarb soda. Um, I, I don't know if this will work with pre-made ink with the natural inks that we make uh, it's really fun to experiment with what different effects we can get um, yeah so that was just for this little color test and I'll bring yeah let it dry throughout our drawing session together and, and see what happens with it and now I would like to to introduce our, our wonderful muse Madusa um, and I'll, I'll just pop the picture up over here um, and maybe switch switch back here for a moment. So, uh, do you happen to be here, Madusa? It would be wonderful to, to have you joining us. Um, I I like to reach out to the people, the muses that I'm working with. Um, everyone, um, yeah, it, it's just a, such an honor to to be able to draw anyone and to be able to share in this way. And I would like to be able to. Um, yeah, use my ability to be able to help uh, give others a chance to share their voice. So I've been reaching out to all of my muses and asking if they have a few words they would like me to share. And today's um, from Madusa, I was just uh, so touched. Um, so I'll just read it out to you. It was um, the words that I would say now on her behalf are, be the change you want to see in the world. The saying is true as it is old. You can only control how you raise your family to be. So be understanding, tolerant, slow to lash out, and quick to listen. Focus on teaching yourself so that you may teach your children that they may be the change, they may change the world when you are gone. And this, uh, <laughs> it spoke to me so much. I have three kids, and um, <clears throat> sometimes I lash out, and uh, it's like, the, these words were just directed at me, so maybe it resonates with some of you too. Um, it was just such a, a special uh, message to share, and uh, I'm so happy to be able to, to share that with you. So be loving, be kind, uh, take care of your kids and all of those uh, around you. Um, let's start drawing together. So poppy seed ink. Uh, puppy petal ink, rather. Um, I have my um, favorite paper for working wet is um, this Hanamula aquarelle watercolor paper. Um, it it can take wet medium really well, so it's two hundred pound or four hundred and twenty five grams the square meter. I have some elder pens over here. So these are, I have a few different widths. These are just cut from elder branches. If you're in my uh, Ink Naturally course, you'll be very familiar with these. We've been making a lot of pens together. Um, and I have a few brushes. And when I'd like to play with these modifiers towards the end, and then I'll, I'll use some of the brushes to, to push around the, the inks and the modifiers. So, um, oops, there's a, Notification, I might switch those off. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Sheila. Yeah, so you got poppy petals yesterday as well. Wonderful. Um, they're, they're so amazing. Um, yeah, so you can ask questions at any time. I'll, I'll start working and then um, I hear them as, as I'm drawing and I'll be able to come back and address uh, any questions as we go along. Craig, I haven't used table salt. 
salt will create really interesting effects, but it's not really a modifier in the sense of um, like bicarb soda and uh, citric acid. Um, salt just kind of it soaks up the water and it will give you some really cool textures. Um, it's a fun thing to play with, but it's not a modifier in that sense. Um, okay, let's start drawing. Um, yeah, th thank you, Sketchy. Um, and thank you, Medusa, for your wonderful um, photo. There, there are, um, check her out on, on Instagram. Maybe, Jordan, could you, you put up in the chat um, Medusa's Instagram account? Um, and it'd be great to, to tag her, and then she'll be able to share the work that everyone does. Um, okay, Darius, thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, here, check out. Madusa Blingada, and she, she has two, Madusa Enigma, I think, is the second one, which is like an art account. There's a lot of wonderful art dedicated and inspired by her. Check her out on YouTube, amazing voice, and it's just so nice to be here um, drawing her with you today. So let's get into it. Um, I'll just, I, I like uh, a direct approach to drawing. I don't do much preliminary drawing. Um, the the um the light fastness of a lot of these botanical inks is really um it's not really archival there are different things we can do to improve the lifespan of the the inks but it's part of the process of working with natural inks is just watching what happens to it as it oxidizes as it's exposed to light things change and nothing is permanent and it's uh it's beautiful madusa is here wonderful we're just about to uh to to get into this, so um, yeah, it's so nice. Maybe you could share directly into the chat um, the tags that people can share. So um, when people are sharing their work, that they you, you you can find it easily, and it's uh, it's going to be so nice to see what everyone does together now. So now we'll get into it. So I've got these my nice pens here, and I like working with broad edge pens and materials straight from nature. Um, I collect these around my house, these branches, and it's just such a pleasure to, to work with materials that you find, and it's um, you know, not, not, not creating any rubbish, and it's, it's just such a nice process to, to make your own art supplies. So enough of that, let's start drawing. Um, so <clears throat> as I start to draw, um, there's no real rule to the way I, um, I choose a place to draw from. Something, something, sometimes something will catch my eye and I'll just start there, start drawing. So we have this nice line here. Um, and as I, I look at things, um, this way of drawing with no preliminary drawing is a it's all just about reducing things to shapes and if you can look at like the the different angles between different shapes and recognize different light and dark forms and just kind of represent those abstract shapes then it comes together in a way which then may rep may have some likeness to to our wonderful muse so i'll just be bouncing around drawing like this and um for some people, it's a big step out of the comfort zone not to do an underdrawing, um, but it's such a wonderful way to learn. And also to, um, I think working with ink is such a, a, a beautiful, it's just, um, it's permanent. So you have to make conscious choices as you're, as you're drawing. And it's, it's just been such a wonderful teacher for me to um, in my my process as as I draw, to really look at something and commit to a choice, and once it's down, that's that's just how it is, and then we accept it, move on, and integrate it. Um, I love these broad edge tools because you can get such a wide range of uh, pen stroke, and just the line quality we get with them is so nice. I 
just how briefly I hear this pop, pop, pop. Um, see what people are saying. So I'll just put this up here so everyone can see the hashtag um, to have Madusa share the work that you'll be creating. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jenny, there's in the course, there's a, a video that shows um, uh, how I make the pens and I think on the Sketcher YouTube v channel there's also a video about um, that shows me cutting a pen um, it's important to have a sharp knife um, okay that's it for questions for now we'll, we'll keep going um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's such a I think the pen making, making your own materials is such just this beautiful way to connect to your work and what you create in a new way and to also to connect to your surroundings. Um, so I would encourage you all to experiment with creating your own art supplies. But also use what you have available. Um, whatever's there, it's, it's perfect. So I'm, I'm always looking, comparing like this space here from the nose and as it swings down here, there's a slight curve and does it line up with the inside corner of the eye? Not quite. So like constantly comparing the angles and what lines up with what and where these different shapes are. It's, it's cool to just keep it pretty loose, but looking around at things like that can help you kind of gain orientation and find your way around. Um, the portrait as you're drawing and sometimes I also just like to yeah make a little kind of mark that will kind of indicate the the, the movement I want to make with the pen as I then commit to making a mark um, And I, I really enjoy um, this kind of vertical hatching. It's just a really simplified way, I think, to to indicate shadow forms. Um, I, it's quite dark here. Um, if you're not aware, the, the link to the reference photo will be in the chat um, below the live stream. So you can check that out and you can be working from the original reference photo at the same time or, or working from, from your screen. But yeah, the, the link to this beautiful photo uh, should be below this stream or video if you're watching it later. And that also just has so many amazing just such a uh, amazing inspiring place for people sharing and um, just getting a glimpse into you know it's, it's like traveling and getting to know people with uh, staying in the comfort of quarantine <laughs> Ah. Um, that's an interesting question Stina I, I've used metal nibs a lot they um, they often really crisp in the the line making, um, but the the um, they they tend to rust and the iron is iron as a modifier and it will affect the the quality. It, it can make the ink darker, um, so it's really interesting to to work with metal nibs. Um, but if they if they are rusty, then they can really affect um, the the color of your ink, which you. Can, can be totally cool if it's um, darkening up the inks. Maybe it's a really nice effect. But some of the inks we make, these natural inks, have a really kind of subtle um, color, which w would then just be altered by using a, a metal nib. So here I'm just trying to find my, my orientation before I commit to making a mark, just um, checking where 
this this angle that we have of the eyes and how, where am I going to place the inside of this eye? Where do, where does it line up with the nostril? Um, so it's really good just to check these things and kind of check the angle, and uh, and then just commit to a point and continue drawing. <laughs> Um, just always bouncing around measuring there's a little tiny triangle of the white of the eye um, ah, you can't you can't see what I'm pointing at uh, yeah the, this tiny little bit of the white of the eye kind of meets up with the edge of the nostril here and just just looking measuring comparing all these little subtle differences can really um, be a great guide as we we navigate our portrait I like to have line variation um, in my drawings, so I like this thick line here, and so I'm being careful around these um, subtle facial features. Um, but as we move into textiles and stuff, it's just fun to to just really get loose and and try some really different kind of line qualities, and not to be too precious with it, because just that variation and looseness um, can just bring such a, a a life to, to a drawing, a kind of variation. So feel free with it and be loose and move your whole body as you, as you draw and uh, you get some really interesting effects. Um, like I said, you know, I haven't drawn with graphite. Um, oh, I have in the past, um, but I do it. Um, if I do a preliminary drawing, then it's super subtle. I, I don't do full-on drawings and then ink over them because the, the graphite and ink um, won't, won't mix so much. Um, so my, my preliminary drawings with pencil will be very light. Um, Clive, I am using poppy petal ink from poppies that I collected this week. Oh, I actually bought some to show you. So. These, this is like the fresh, amazing color of these poppy petals. And here they're drying. So we can preserve any kind of uh, plant material by just drying it. Um, and then it won't mold. And at a later date, we'll be able to take these dry petals and make ink with it. So thanks for reminding me. Clive, um, poppy petal ink, I love it. Um, I'm not sure what you mean, Marcy. Um, if you're talking to me about the poppy petal ink, I, I soaked them for like half a day a while back. Um, Madusa, thank you. It's, it's so cool to have you here. It's it's wonderful. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's continue. <clears throat> So I like this um, vertical hatching. If it's not, it's not our darkest dark. It's it's really lovely dark shadow form here, but it's not as dark as the eyebrow. So maybe you know, there are different approaches. Um, but I think the it just kind of creates a, a subtle difference to to use a bit of hatching rather than solid ink here. And the first time I made this poppy petal ink was last year. Oh, I just such a wonderful color. And it's just the these poppies are so abundant here. It's like they're just red fields and it's uh, it's quite incredible. And to be able to um you know with a really good uh uh feeling to to, to just be able to take from that abundance. And I always think it's really important to, you know, be aware of the abundance of nature and, and sometimes some of the things we find are not so abundant. 
Um, and then it's better just to let them live their lives and grow and do what they will. But um, you know, some, sometimes nature just provides things in such abundance and to, to be able to take from that and work with that is such a beautiful thing. So I enjoy this way of drawing because um, I don't really have a plan. Here I'm just checking out. So, so these kind of subtle things. Um, where does the corner of the mouth line up compared to the nose? Um, and I kind of intuitively maybe would have taken it out a bit further, but just by checking here I'm like, oh, it's actually a step in. If we look at the straight vertical, um, the corner of the mouth is a step in from the edge of the nose. These kind of things are really good to observe and can be things that can help us to achieve a likeness as we draw. It's not all about achieving a likeness um, and don't be a slave to your reference but for me personally I, I find it very rewarding to to be able to um, somehow capture some of the essence of the likeness of a person and uh, it's just sometimes it's fun just to totally be free and let go of any kind of expectation but sometimes it's nice when it does look like that person and the more kind of loose free drawing we do then the the more likely that the, the the more often in my experience anyway um after freeing up and loosening and kind of letting go of the expectation of creating a likeness i have gotten a much closer to being able to to kind of capture a likeness in my drawings so this is um, top lip, it's just such a lovely dark shadow area, I can just flood it with ink. The uh, outside corner of the mouth is going quite far out, lining up with the eye here, so there's this beautiful chain there. Um, a question about storing inks. You can store them in the refrigerator if you have the luxury of having that much space in your refrigerator. Um, the top shelf of mine is full of jars of ink. Um, uh, you can also add uh, a few drops of alcohol, like pure alcohol, rubbing alcohol, um, will prevent gro mold growth or cloves, whole cloves. You can drop into ink, it will stop them from getting moldy. Clove oil, thyme oil. Um, if they get mouldy, you can scoop the mould off and use the ink. Um, you can then boil it if you want to sterilise it. And if you're really serious about keeping your inks fresh, then um, you can boil all of the jars and boil all of the utensils you use during your ink making as well. Now, just like when you're making jam or any kind of conserving of food, that you take care to um, sterilize the things that you're using. Um, light fastness is, uh, it varies from, from ink to ink and it depends on what you're doing with your drawings and paintings. Um, if you if you have it in a sketchbook, it doesn't get exposed to UV uh, radiation so much and will retain its original color for a long time. Um, but as a lot of these plants oxidize, just as in the way things deteriorate in nature, they also tend to fade or they may shift to a different hue. And I think this process of the way um, the colors shift and change is actually a beautiful experience, uh, something beautiful to observe and to take notice of. And also, um, you know, it's it's uh, uh, an exercise in impermanence as well. Um, uh, just to you know, if 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 you really want to preserve it, there are things you could do. Put it behind UV glass, um, but. 
for a while I used to do some land art, just making things in nature and you know, you just leave it to the elements and it decays and takes on its own, you know, natural life. And I think there's a, a nice connection to this um, process of making natural inks that we can just observe and take note of how well things retain their colour and, and some of them don't. And that's fine. Because I, I think for me, the, the process of um, creating art is something that I really enjoy. And then once it's made, um, then it just kind of takes on its own life. But the, just that, the process of connection and observing and intuition and being in flow, <clears throat> that that's, um, you know, that's why I draw. Um, and once a piece is finished, um, then it's no longer mine. Okay, so I think this is um, some really nice facial features set up here. Um, so I'm just looking to the border, like, oh, this reference photo is just so nice. Um, ah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. So this is going to be fun, just to set up this um, radiant face amongst the, this wonderful dark border and cloth. It's, it's going to be really fun. So now looking towards that, that border and, oops. Um, you could probably spray it with fixative, um, sure. There, there are certain um, fixatives and varnishes and stuff which also kind of create uh, a, a layer of UV protection. That will probably work. Um, if you mix iron or copper into your inks, then they also, um, it, it darkens them and changes the quality of the color, but also affects the light fastness. Like I have had things of acorn ink hanging on the wall in the sun for four years and they, they look the same as the day that I painted them. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can try the petals from any flowers, but educate yourself before you poison yourself. There are a lot, um, you know, it's, there are some plants which, um, you know, just to the touch can, can be really poisonous. So if you find something and it looks amazing, find out what it is <laughs> um, before you start making a lot of ink with it because you don't want to endanger yourself or anyone else. Um, that some white flowers will give you surprising colors like chestnut blossoms, Stina made <laughs> like this orange ink with chestnut blossoms, awesome. But um, white roses, it just looks like dirty water if you make ink with white rose petals. Um, yeah, so which ones give better light fa fastness? Yeah, good answer, Stina, the dark ones. So um, really, yeah, dark inks will retain their light fa fastness much better. And as I mentioned, if there's iron in there. So my, my most used ink has been acorn ink. And you can make dark inks from, from anything which has tannin in it. And iron reacts with tannin and makes it really nice and dark. And then you can um, yeah, that the kind of the mineral element that having iron in there just makes a really lovely dark color, and it becomes much more light fast. And using um, mineral colors, so it's not something I've done a lot of, but I, I want to get into um, making paint with different sandstone. There's all these amazing sandstone um, here, um, purple and yellow and. And if it's a, an earth pigment, then it will be more likely, um, it will retain its color. Uh, yeah. So we're over halfway in, let's, uh, and this, this was the most, for, for me, the most important, most careful moment of the, the drawing. And now I can really like start putting down a lot of ink and um, really loosen up and, 
It's, uh, then it gets really fun. And I love that contrast, just of something really um, conscious and controlled and then something loose and free. It's just a, a lovely, lovely thing to do. So you may have heard me say it before, but contrast in life um, and contrast in art and drawing um, is something that I really appreciate. So I'm just um, move this over here now, setting up some areas which I'll be able to just come and like flood with ink. So some of these dark areas are going to be really uh, a joy to to put ink into. And just by setting up kind of clear shapes. And it's fun to play with your line quality, to twist a pen as you're drawing. <clears throat> um, and you could like leave it as a line drawing and you still have something really interesting and, and beautiful. But I think it's going to be fun today to take it a step beyond line drawing. Cause, and in the course, we're, we're going into light and shadow this week. We've just had a, a week focusing on line quality and line drawing. And um, and the next step is then, you know, bringing in that depth and and form with light and shadow. Is, is my daughter still here? If so, you know, is, um, is there a particular story to, to this photo? Or would you just like to leave that to us to uh, interpret? Ah, that's lovely. Yeah, and I think working with ink, just for me, really, <clears throat> that sentiment is so, um, yeah, ink has just become my chosen medium and I feel that is what, it's what helps me to express and kind of live and embody that experience in, in the creation of my art, of just um, working with purpose and accepting accidents and, you know, maybe even bringing them to your advantage. Ah, Lydia, you're welcome. Um, that's nice. It's nice to be calm sometimes. Oh yeah, so here's uh, Madusa's call to to us artists. What, what do we think the uh, the story behind the photo is? So feel free to put it in the chat. I am. Um, I showed this photo and was talking to a friend today who came to visit, visit Hamidha, in case you're watching. Um, it was lovely having you here. And I yeah, showed her your photo, Madusa, and she was like, wow, it looks so mystical. And, um, and then when I, I read the, your, your wisdom that you shared with us, and it's just like, wow, it's, it's like you were, you were speaking directly to me about not lashing out to kids to um, you know, be tolerant, and that's that's like my my quest and my challenge. Um, and it was just, yeah, that that Mead had said, oh, it's so mystical, and then how it, what what you wanted to share with everyone was like d directly aimed at me. I, I thought that was a nice connection to that um, that mystical feel of the. of your wonderful photo. So once I start putting in a lot of ink, um, it'll be very wet. So um, I want to be clear before I start doing that. 
of my kind of what do I want to do where if I'm going to put in some modifiers which is going to be really fun um, how do I clearly structure it so that things don't flood into each other and bleed too much um, so that's another part of the planning and making a, a purposeful choice in the process of like the next step of adding the shadows I think I'll, I'll put some more vertical hatching uh, so that's going to help keep the the face the, um, really bright in contrast to the rest um, Um, this shape here is going to be really dark so that'll be nice to put some of the um, the baking soda in into that dark area because it's gonna really make this dark intense contrast to the shape um, so I have um, a lot of brushes here um, it's nice to have a big brush to be able to put down a lot of ink um, so I don't know what this is called it's um, a 19 millimeter watercolor brush. I'm just reading the, the comments here briefly. Hello, Paula from Portugal. Welcome. It's nice to come late sometimes. So Julie thinks this is a photo of a special occasion. It, it does look very special. Exploring uniqueness, individuality through your lovely features and the texture of elements around you. That just sounds like a wonderful general approach to life. Marcy asks if it's a wedding photo. Um, do I generally work from secondary sources? No. Um, I, I do a weekly live drawing session face to face. Now it's online since lockdown, so you can join us. But um, drawing from life is, is such an important thing to do and also to establish a direct connection to your subject. Um, it's such, just such an important and beautiful, wonderful thing to do, draw from life. Um, so I draw a lot from life, but I also love, especially now and since the lockdown, like. Sketchy has just been so wonderful to have there, and um, and there's just so many wonderful photos and so many wonderful people to there sharing their their art and inspiration with each other. So I think um, a mix. You know, sometimes it's more practical to to work from a a photo, and but it's great to actually sit with someone and connect and and do their portrait. Yeah, exciting to use a brush. Andy, nice to have you here. Oh, um, so I, I squint a lot as I um, do these kind of things. We see here, there's this um, part of the chest, the skin and the neck coming down here, which in contrast to its surroundings looks much brighter, but it's actually also really dark. So. Um, I would like to fill that in with this original um, poppy color and add my bicarb soda to the surrounding shadow, which is going to be a really nice um, contrast. So maybe I already I prepared some um, baking soda with water, which I'm hoping is going to work just to brush it in instead of dripping it on oh but here's uh here's what i did earlier and look from the baking soda it's just spread out and become almost black and here is really pink and this was actually the unchanged
color it has this really nice dark purple color so that's cool I just spilled some ink over there that happens watch out be careful stay attentive to where you have your ink have ink all over the place so here is my baking soda and I want to so I mix this in with water and I'm gonna brush some of it into this dark shadow area so this is making the ink more alkaline and um, totally changing the color so two wonderful different um, colors from from the same from the same plant and we can get such a wonderful array of colors it's it's so much fun to experiment with brightened mud with this day that's wonderful and and you ours so thank you so much over there for now um, I wanted to um, there's these nice golden points um, in the fabric here so I'm, I'm just gonna pretty quickly just indicate some of those so as I go filling in all this ink that I, I know where I want to work around to, to keep those little radiant points there And this is this um, kind of golden rim that we have. Just by indicating that, I know to keep it free, to keep it bright, because it's you know that's part of the the, the wonderful quality of this cloth is that lovely golden contrast there. So it would be a shame to lose that as we get excited by putting ink down. So it's really good just to put down an indication of what we want to keep. Um, white of the paper um, it's important with these kind of decorative elements and patterns like we, we have a tendency sometimes to, to just do regular patterns and it can kind of make something look less alive if a, a regular pattern is repeated too often and it's interesting to notice here that there's this wonderful kind of irregularity to the way the these points are dispersed um, so it's good to take note of that and to um, if you just switch into autopilot sometimes you just kind of do really regular pattern work, which can also be totally amazing. But um, in, in this case, that's not what we're looking at. So just to be aware that everything's kind of a bit offset and there's no really clear um, structure to this pattern. So um, just incorporating that kind of irregularity into the drawing, I think is a, a cool thing to be aware of. Okay, so I'm going to keep some of those golden points really nice and clear. Um, and I'll put down some more ink. So we still have like 10 minutes and then we can chat a bit, can ask questions. Um, but for now, I'm really, 
I, I love this moment of transformation when you've set something up and you start laying down all the shadow. And look at this, look at this color. It's so red. And as it dries and oxidizes, it's turning into this amazing dark purple. Ah, oh, it's just such, such a joy to work with this and, and to know, like, I know the flowers, I know the place where this came from. And I picked these petals, made this ink, and I'm watching this transformation take place as I'm working. And it has this kind of beautiful, unpredictable quality to creating art in this way. So I've, I've tried many things and I also had, you know, times working with acrylic and oil paint and really struggling to match a color um, and to make something look really realistic. And, and part of the process of working with ink and working with natural inks in this way is just letting go. And it's okay if it's all like purple and red. Um, I don't have to perfectly match the color tones and just letting the ink do its thing um, and bleed and kind of stretch out and make these strange shapes and change color in unusual ways um, becomes part, it's like co-creating with the ink and with the plant. Um, and relinquishing control of the, the final outcome. And that's a process that I really enjoy. So I have this tight controlled area where I was really careful drawing this face and then just to to let go and let it flow and let the ink here just spread out and maybe these shapes start interacting with each other and bleed into each other change color and it's just such a such a rewarding fun thing to do so i'm glad you're all here maybe working with your own natural inks maybe not if not i hope maybe i'm inspiring you to to try out some ink making oh look at that I'm not sure if I wanted that to happen, but that whoa, darkness is just bleeding down, spreading out here, and, and just just go with it. Now, how many people are actually here? that are um, currently doing the, the Ink Naturally course. <clears throat> there's, it's, it's wonderful that there's such a, you know, there's the sketchy community and there's all this, also this ink making community which is coming together and um, it's so great to, since the start of June, to see, see your work appearing every day on Instagram and see people experimenting with ink and spending time in nature. Um, I'm really happy to be able to share that experience with you. It's, it's just great to see what people are doing. So it's interesting to notice that this is really red and well, like how red it is and then it kind of it cools down, oxidizes and changes color. And we'll be able to put some lemon juice in here and bring back some of the intensity of that red and push it back towards that. Oh, just, just this color sample from earlier, like this lovely red color. We'll be able to add some of that to this painting too. And um, maybe you have made, if, if you're in the class, Maybe you've made some blueberry ink. Um, you know, you can do, do that with the, these modifiers as well. Um, there's, um, uh, I, know, I know a lot of German names of plants, but sometimes I can't remember what they are in English. Hollyhocks, um, which are, will start flowering soon here. They are also wonderful. Um, rose petals. Stina has made some wonderful rose ink yesterday. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of petals uh, and different things will, or a lot of plant materials and different things will react differently to the, the different modifiers. So it's um, really fun to kind of find out how different things react. 
and just that spirit of curiosity and experimentation I think is such an important and wonderful thing in, in ink making in making art and in life in general I guess um, so it's nice to let it flow into the art in that way that kind of inquisitive playful experimentation All right, I um, I was gonna put ink in into the the fabric above the head, but I think I'll just do some vertical hatching there because it's actually really light compared to the rest. Um, so I'll just quickly fill that in, and then um, we'll just start dropping some lemon juice on here and see what happens. So this is pretty subtle and it just indicates that you know there's um that this is a much lighter area than this and i don't feel the need to go into much more detail than just that kind of implication of of difference Just squeeze juice on, or should I carefully paint some lemon juice on? I'm not sure what to do. What would you do? All of you amazing ink making artists out there. So if I just drip it on, it's going to like kind of create really interesting shapes. And we don't have much time left. It's like three minutes left, so let's just let's just start dripping juice. Can use the lemon as a uh, painting drawing tool. I think it's going to settle down once it dries, but <laughs> this is this is amazing. Um, oh, th these moments are just so magical. Wow. And I, I feel like that's the the original color of the poppy petal is like returning with full force like it's it's dried and it's changed into this liquid form and it's been you know transformed and now this citric acid is just pushing it back to kind of you know to where it came from to so this this bright red amazing color so this is dry and it, it turns into this and then with this being push back with this acidity to this original color. So I'll just put that over here. Stop now, says <laughs> Stefan. Um, all right, it looks like it's time pretty much. So this could be a good place to stop. Later on, I may let it dry and, and do some, um, maybe change some things. Maybe I'll just leave it. I don't know, you know, it's nice to step away from things and to see what happens and then maybe come back and bring something new. But for now, this is, um, you know, this has been a fun hour. So if anyone has uh, questions, um, then start start asking because I'm, I'm here to read and uh, can spend a little more time together. For those leaving, um, it's been so wonderful having you here. Thank you for joining us. And if you would like to, to learn some more portrait making uh, with me and ink making, then sign up to the Ink Naturally class, which is happening right now. Um, and you can go at your own pace. And we have these live streams, we hang out, connect together. It's, uh, it's really 
fun experience. Um, so I think the link is in the comments below this um, if you want to sign up to the, the course. We would love to have you join us. Um, so now we'll just see if anyone's got any um, questions. How is the puppy ink prepared? Um, it's incredibly simple. I collected the petals. Um, some of them had fallen, um, but there were just so many thousands of petals that I, um, you know, so I just took some, but I always take care not to just to strip an area bare to take all the petals, um, so to move around throughout the flowers and take some. I collected a lot of petals, I chopped them up, and I just put them in a jar with water. And <clears throat> it's amazing the way the pigment just flows from the petals into the water. Um, so it's, and then I left it for half a day and then I had like this red wine color water, uh, which is this, this ink, which is here. So it was an incredibly simple ink and these poppy petals are just amazing. And they just have such an intense pigment that you can just put it in a jar of water and, um, it will kind of self extract the pigment. Um, so thank you for the question. Um, thank you so much, my daughter. Um, Jacqueline, just thank you. I thank you so much. Uh, yeah, for, for sharing with us in this way. Um, it's beautiful to connect from afar. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Craig asked, do we scare it? Sketch sketchy? <clears throat> um, sure. Then you can share on Sketchy, share on Instagram. Um, so you can hashtag Madusa's um, hashtag. We had that up here earlier. Um, you can also hash, hashtag Ink Naturally and hashtag Drawing with Dylan. Um, so yeah, share on Instagram and share on Sketchy. Um, if you would like to hang out and draw together on Tuesday, every Tuesday, um, we meet and draw live for two hours online with the Zoom and we get to share stories and laugh. We do timed portrait drawing and it's such a, a wonderful practice. Um, so you can find information about that in my Instagram. Um, yes, thank you, thank you, there it is. <laughs> I was looking through the comments. Hashtag Medusa Art Gallery. There's so, many, so much amazing art um, inspired by Medusa. And check out Medusa on YouTube. It's such a beautiful voice. Thank you for singing. Um, and I can't see too many questions here. Okay, we've got this as well. Because Madusa has two accounts, so um, tag both. Um, and tag, tag me, tag Madusa, tag Sketchy, and uh, it's gonna be lots of fun to see what everyone's created right now and in the coming days. Um, Jude, the water that I use for the poppy petal ink was cold. You sometimes get a different res result if you use hot and cold water. Some things need to be cooked, some things don't. Um, so that's also something just to experiment with. Um, this ink doesn't have any iron in it, Ginny. Um, and the water to baking soda is also just something to um, experiment with. I just, I had a very small amount of water here. Sometimes I just sprinkle the baking soda on and, and I don't use recipes very often. So it's just kind of intuitive experiment. I think experimenting is the best way to become acquainted with these different um, modifiers and, and things. You get a, I don't know, maybe it's just the way I approach things, but I feel like I have a better understanding of how they um, react if I'm uh, just experiment and try things out. Um, thank you to everyone who's saying thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been great drawing together. I have made ink with, um, peonies, with roses, with, um, poppy cop. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I can't remember. Hollyhock. <laughs> um, chestnut blossoms, uh, wisteria, lots of different things. I'll try things out, but check up that they're not poisonous. Tibbo, I do remember you. It's so cool that you're here. Um, 
I used to be Tibor's neighbor in, in Belgium and it's, uh, it's so cool to have you here. And he has a flute that I built from him. Um, flute building was like, I, I, before I was making pens with elder twigs, I was building flutes with elder branches. So it's so wonderful that you've joined us, Tibor. That's great. Say hi to your family for me. Um, yeah, um, I think that's it. Um, okay, uh, one last question here. You can use use them fresh. Um, is awesome. And the drying them is just for preservation. Like um, if you have a really dry place to store them, then you'll be able to make ink from the dried petals. But if you want to start um, painting with it today, tomorrow, then do it fresh. Go for it. Um, okay. Timbo's 21 now. When you're like six, <laughs> when we live next door. That's amazing. Um, I, I just recently collected some pine cones and I'm going to try. I'll find out if I can make ink with pine cones. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram and um, in the coming weeks, you'll see the results of my pine cone experiment. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone. Thank you, Sketchy. Thank you, Madusa, once again. Um, it's, it's been a lovely hour together and I look forward to seeing what you will create. So um, yeah, take care, be kind, um, love, and oh, see what you create soon and let's connect right to me on instagram i'm always happy to connect with people so thanks a lot bye bye